As an emergency response agency under the emergency management arrangements in the state, we're responsible for immediate animal relief and agricultural relief. And then following that, we identify recovery needs and implement uh, recovery programs. We are the peak body that represents local producers, lots of different industries on the island. A lot of advocacy, talking to government, talking to other peak bodies. As an organisation, Livestock SA was established in 2013, representing the sheep, cattle and goat industries. We've always had a connection since that time with PERSA representing those producers. In regard to areas of, of work like this, such as responding to disasters, it just brings the relationship closer together. We partner with industry because they have the critical relationships with the growers in the regions. They understand their needs and then we can design programs you know, to address the needs that our industry partners have identified. Working with industries and communities impacted is really critical to our role. Initially we work with industry on identifying short-term relief and recovery needs. Things like access to fodder, access to secure water, access to fence posts to get people back to business. The Hills and Flora Landscape Board, just like other landscape boards across the state, really, I think, in my view, have two key partners across government, and that is the Department for Environment and Water and PERSA. And through the role that PERSA plays in the state emergency response, uh, there were some resources through that fund that found its way into Hills and Flora Landscape Board, and we were able to roll that money out to support landholders in the recovery efforts in that landscape. It's an incredibly close partnership. PERS is really strong on their work with landholders. We're really strong on our work with landholders. We come to it from slightly different angles. We meet in the middle. We've worked with PERSA for many years. AKI is over 25 years old now. We've been working with PERSA the whole time, but yeah, it really stepped up after the fires because there was a lot more work to do, being half the island being lost to the fire, um, and PERSA really wanted to help. So we were able to really use those connections we already had to really make effective change and really help farmers on the ground. The relationship with PERSA began immediately after the fire. We had a, a conference pulled together within 48 hours, I think. It was really very rapid. That relationship with them became one of constant phone calls. We were talking to them probably three or four times a day as we started to talk through what was going to be needed uh, for our members to, first of all, uh, clean up. Uh, and then start thinking about how they began the very long process of recovery. As soon as the fire came through, PERS's expertise was really good. Um, they put fab workers out there and, and went and called on all the farmers. PERSA and all other people in, in investing into Kangaroo Island post bushfire, the level of community need on every different angle was absolute. And having two government agencies work hand in fist to deliver an outcomes focused agenda that was based on creating positive environmental, social, uh, economic outcomes, I think couldn't have been more valuable for the community. We've had the opportunity to, to be quite creative in how we achieve what we think are the needs of our members uh, within this space. It's not just about recovering from the the flames or recovering even from the smoke. It's about building resilience ongoing. Working with PERS has been great. AKI really, we, we know everyone and we, we know what's going on, on the ground, but we don't have the resources where PERS can come in and provide those government resources. It's a really good partnership. We, our strengths really work well together. From the outset, I would say this was a really unique partnership. It was very clear that these were people who were coming to us. This was not a faceless government department. We knew their names straight away. They were on the phone with us. They were up at our offices. They wanted to meet our members. We're gonna maintain and build on the relationships we've developed through these programs and aim to build resilience in these communities to future events. They might be bushfires, but they might be other events like flooding, hailstorms, those sort of things.